today is more so going to be uh, something unique to this channel because the apostolic calling is meant to be about that living spirit inside of us and the testimonies that I've received in my time working with that living spirit and through sacrifice have received revelation after revelation that has helped me to build my faith in the Most High and, um, and realize that uh, the cares of this world are irrelevant to the plans that he has for myself and I am to trust in his ways and his direction. Now, I'm going to back this up with a bit of scripture today. We know that the word of God is harmonious. It, it is written all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, these amazing verses of harmony from the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, talking about instruction um, and how to seek the Most High. Right throughout the New Testament, Paul's writings, I'm going to go there today specifically speaking of Paul's writings, but um, we are living literally living testimonies with that spirit inside of us and so long as we have the spirit in christ uh, uh the spirit of christ rather inside of us we are constantly testifying not only to uh the the glorious fruits that he instills in us speaking of what's written in galatians 5 23 that love uh, joy peace goodness faith meekness temperance right long suffering these are qualities that come from the fruits of the spirit but we are also able to exercise or be testimonies of his power and how when we invest all of our time and faith into the most high he will tend to us through many different signs and wonders in the world including those that have been written in the book of exodus and um and also those uh, those great stories of the prophets of old how they received revelation of coming uh, prophetic events now we know that there are many uh, ministering or, or brothers and sisters in Christ that uh, can be found on this platform here that speak uh, all around the world of how they've seen prophetic visions and uh, there are many prophetic things that they've uh, dreamed about that have come to pass and how they've also had uh, many different uh, uh, testimonies of divine revelation uh, or divine intervention rather being uh, pulled away from death at the last minute to even some folks even seeing death, right, and going to this uh, uh, horrible place of, um, of fiery torment to those who have also felt the glorious light of Christ and that glorious presence of Christ, right? Now, I've experienced this firsthand myself, but for you to experience it is a whole other thing, and that's what I'm here to try and get you to feel, right? We know that... Uh, uh, he 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 writes his his burden is is light and his yoke is easy right or his burden is easy and his his yoke is right rather uh, light rather so we we know that he is complete peace right and um and so this is what I'm going to testify or bring a few of these um, testimonies in the in the time of this channel will god willing be up here to air for all of you to see whether you're a believer whether you're a non-believer or whether you're being pulled into the world welcome to this channel and uh, look i myself uh, would like to profess that i am a living testimony as a child of the most high god uh, as to someone who has built faith according to the many different signs and wonders that he has worked for me in my life and that he has shown me right now sure many people can say um Many brothers and sisters in this world can say that, uh, you know, the power of your mind is is an incredible force, right? And that, um, you know, we have the ability to manifest certain things on our own. Our, our own. But that is not the truth. The, the, the bottom line is, folks, that we have the one true living God who uh, testifies of his saving grace for us every single day. We know that Christ himself became the last sacrifice on the cross. And when he resurrected, he gave birth. He gave um, he gave birth to that to that doctrine of grace that we are currently living under right now. And while many of us sin every single day, we have our sin sin unrepented for, unatoned for. But we will have to answer to the just judge on the day of judgment. And folks, if I'm wrong, then I'm living an absolutely perfect life according to the great signs and wonders that the one true living God has has um, blessed me within my life. But if you're wrong and you're still living in uh, your um, state of delusion of, of lustful pleasures and um, and whatever other immoral behavior you commit, 
and and even just turning away from God and being uh, having an atheist mindset itself, which is so sinful uh, in its own way. Um, uh, if you're wrong, uh, then you're the one who will face the the punishment, as we all will, or as as most of us unfortunately will, uh, because it is uh, written that hell is literally opening up its mouth, and we can see why with all of these manifestations occurring uh, in this in this sinful world, right? But uh, look, don't be deterred by the words that I um, I am uh, uh, speaking right now. Um, look, I mean, I am uh, I'm a hum- I, w- I would like to c- call myself a humble servant of God, and I don't unrighteously judge other brothers and sisters. Look, I'm 26 years old. I came from the world two years ago, so I totally understand the hardships that you, brother or sister, are going through, and. Um, look, let me um, let me be again another testimony to you um, that um, no matter how hard the times are that you're currently experiencing, Christ is faithful to forgive you no matter what sins you've committed. No, no matter what bad, let's forget the word sin and the whole um, uh, uh, biblical terminology for a minute. No matter what bad you've you've done, no matter what, uh, no matter how lowly and depressed you've been, no matter um, how much you've destroyed your body. If you are faithful and turn to Christ and re- and um, and are generally regretful of what you have done, and if you turn to the Creator of heaven and earth out of pure humility, out of realizing that perhaps uh, um, the doctors, the psychiatrists, um, the um, the education, uh, the education system, the um, even the healthcare system, you know, they they aren't the ones who can. If, if, if you have reached out to all of these different um, places of of um, of uh, worship in the world, right, or even, even other religious churches, and they still, if nothing has worked for you, just remember that we ourselves have a living relationship with the one true creator of heaven and earth because he knew us before we even came out of the womb, right? So if we turn to his word, right, if we study to show ourselves approved. But most importantly of all, if we just, from the beginning, if we just turn to him out of pure humility and out of pure love and out of pure um, pure desire to change your life, if you are at rock bottom, the great thing about the one true living God and the creator of heaven and earth is that if you are at rock bottom, he will come and save you, right? I Without a shadow of a doubt, there are just there is too much evidence in this world to testify His love. This world was made in perfect love, right? And we know that the uh, element of of evil does exist. So when you have an understanding of the doctrine of what's going on in this world according to what's written in um, in the Hebrew and Greek scripts that is written in the Holy Bible, you will have a greater understanding as to the hardships that we go through. And just having bat- and, and just getting baptized as a star will allow that spirit of Christ to come inside of you. You will be able to conceive that spirit. And when you receive that spirit, that is the spirit of truth. It will show you wisdom. It will show you instruction. And most of all, it's going to convict you uh, when, when you turn back uh, to sin, if you ever do so, right? <clears throat> And it's going to be a hedge of protection around you in the coming times, providing you are obedient to the Creator and you um, and you are willing to uh, submit to His commands uh, for what He wants for you in your life. Because none of the principalities, none of the powers, none of the um, entertainment you experience in this world, none of the uh, lustful pleasures you experience in this world are going to be edifying uh, to you in the long term. Everything in this world, including everything that you experience, will pass away, folks, right? But so long as we keep the faith, and this is a thing, faith is, is, is um, uh, you know, it's written in the book of Hebrews, is the substance of things hoped for, the things not yet received but promised, right? But when you're operating with that spirit of truth inside of you, it really does, from what I've found personally, Help grow your faith when you have constant revelation and instruction being handed to you by the Most High God. For example, since I've been in this truth uh, since um, September of last year and since I received my very own water baptism, um, I have seen the manifestations of 
God's handiwork all around me, helping to literally clear my past and show me instruction, in, especially in times when I've submitted to prayer and fasting um, and have actually humbled myself and taken away all of the uh, pleasures I have in this world in order to be at one with him. It is the mental the mental commitment um, at which I submit myself in times that I've submitted myself and said, okay, um, you know, I'm really feeling like it's time to be, uh, you know, I'm really feeling there's, there's, there's this urge weighing on my spirit that perhaps there's something missing in terms of the instruction um, that, that I'm receiving from you. Perhaps, you know, I'm stuck in some sort of sin or perhaps I'm stuck in a, uh, a bit of a, um, I'm not elevating in my walk. And, um, and, and in these times of submission, uh, through prayer, through fasting, through getting out of the city in the worldly rut, through simply just saying inside of yourself that it's time that the one true creator, um, just to seek him and say, listen, Father, um, I, I need your revelation. I need you to instruct me because I don't know, uh, you know, what the times hold and I don't know how much time I have left in my life and I just want to please you. And, and, and through my experience and the times that I've done this and truly humbled myself and not said it, not just said it with my, the words coming out of my mouth, but also thought this in my mind and also felt this in my body with that spirit radiating, uh, uh, radiating its convictions right throughout my body, then um, I have received um, great edification and instruction from him and also great cares after for that sacrifice. It's almost like he gives you a pat on the back and he blesses you with certain things um, that, that, are, that are godly and righteous and holy and a lot of peace does come with those sacrifices. I assure you of that. So, again, something unique today. I didn't want to come here and talk over and over again about Scripture and try to give you something edifying in terms of the Word of God, which is great in itself, but I just don't want to come across as a standard ministry speaking expressly of things written in the Bible. I want to speak or apply Bible doctrine to the different testimonies that have happened in my life that will hopefully inspire you to turn to God and serve him as well as I am right now and living the best life that I've ever lived in my entire life. Have felt innocent like I was a child again and have also received uh, so much wisdom beyond what can be found in the confines of this world in terms of the indoctrination systems that have you in a complete, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, limit uh, box of limited capacity um, in terms of how far you can actually reach right, according to the principalities and the spiritual uh, bondage that comes with that indoctrination that we receive uh, in our times of um, uh, maturing and aging in this world because we are conceived, we are shaped in sin, we know no better, right, and we're kept in that bondage for so long until God's calling comes, right. I've received that calling, I adhere to that calling, and every single day that I walk in this truth, I'm having to sacrifice more and more because I realize the accountability on my shoulders is mounting with the more knowledge that I receive, um, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And it's up to me and my brothers around me to not feed ourselves, as Ezekiel 34 explains, not be shepherds or, uh, yeah, shepherds feeding ourselves, but also feeding the flock in order to get back to the lamb, which is Christ. All right. So... What is the whole purpose of today's video? Well, as of in, in most recent times, you know, I've felt the spirit moving me in a direction um, that is, is, is telling me, you know, that while it's great to be edified by the scriptures and to meditate every day on it, day and night, it's also important that we receive revelation from Christ ourselves with that spirit and that we are actually applying our knowledge to what, what we know. Right, and now, now there are certain um, there are certain uh, cares of this world that can hold us in bondage and from stopping us from making uh, serious sacrifices in terms of our growth and development um, as ministering saints of the gospel and, and and sons and daughters of the Most High, right, His children. But I guess if there's one great source of evidence as to there being a God in this world. It is the fact that when you go on this platform, speaking of YouTube, you will see other brothers and sisters who um, who actually 
have seen dreams that have come to pass. They have, um, as I said earlier, they have uh, received um, these incredible moments of divine intervention. They have felt the presence of God. You know, they have um, they have uh, seen His signs and wonders work miracles in their body. You know, people have been healed from cancer. Um, you know, I've 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 encountered at least a couple of different um, testimonies in regards to that from just people that I've met out in the streets, right? I've seen, um, you know, when the doctors said that there was absolutely no chance that they would they would recover, when, when they've submitted themselves in these particular cases, they've actually had the saving grace of God come to them, right? And, and, and furthermore, we see these other great signs and wonders occurring prophetically in the world with, for example, Bible doctrine taking place, like in the book of Revelations, we know the Euphrates River is drying up, right? This is currently occurring as Bible prophecy um, prophesied in that book. We also can see the wars and rumors of wars currently circulating. We can see Bible doctrine and biblical wars taking place with particular countries. And we can also see the famine, the earthquakes increasing every single day and more to this, we can also see the continue, continue, continuation of the rising of atheism and also the godlessness increasing in the last days, which is also what's been prophesied, right? So a lot of you, for this uh, specific reason, are probably questioning as um, questioning why there is so much um, there is so much atheism, there's so much godlessness. Why would there be a god if he exists? Well, what you need to remember that there is is that there are two gods that run this earth. Now, Satan, or Lucifer, the false light bearer of this world, is currently reigning in this earth to try and defeat uh, his, uh, or not even defeat, he is being defeated by Christ. He is stuck in this earth, according to um, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, with, which explains he was, he was in the spiritual realm. This is taking place, right? He has been kicked out of heaven, heaven and his disobedient angels, and he is trapped in this earth until his appointed judgment. Now, for this reason, he is trying to take as many souls as he can to that place of eternal damnation. And we know that we are in the la literally in the last hour, so to speak, in terms of biblical times. We are in the last hour. We are in, we are in the last days before the coming of Christ. So, for this specific reason, the um, the time is speeding up. Right, because for the very elect's sake, unless it isn't sped up, few, very few will be saved. Because Satan is absolutely ramping up his attacks on this world. Now we know that the CERN uh, Hadron Collider, a fair use, this video is fair use, um, is actually uh, a li another living testimony in this world of how the principalities or the places of higher power are trying to summon. Uh, demonic spiritual energy and, and and demons into this world and uh, are probably doing so as we speak to try and um, as, as as a form of um, Satan's uh, uh, another agenda that Satan has placed forth in this earth in order for as many souls as as, as he can be as he can uh, to take to the lake of fire right there there is a battle for souls so to speak and um it's, it's not very hard to see why. When you have an understanding of what goes on in the spiritual realm, it, uh, it really does um, testify for itself. But I'm not going to go too much into that in this video, right? When you have the knowledge that the doctrine gives you of what sin is and what goes on in the spiritual realm, you will have a greater understanding and a better, uh, a better capacity, um, a better intellectual capacity um, of, of what is actually... Um, let me rephrase that rather, excuse me. You will have a greater understanding than what most other uh, sons and daughters of God in this world do about what is actually happening in this world, right? Uh, Lucifer, the false light bearer, he wants you to be stuck in uh, your, your, your lustful desires. He wants you to be living in a state of comfort. He doesn't want you to be asking the bigger play, uh, the bigger questions, right? So, and the reason why I use the word "he" is because um, it's prophesied that um, Lucifer is the father of lies, but we know that the father of light is Christ, and He is the one true, um, 
living God that literally testifies every single day. And back onto that note, look, I'm not going to try and I'm trying to not get carried away on too much of a tangent here. I'm just trying to work with the Holy Spirit as these words come through. But um, the, the the religions in this world, uh, there there are so many religions in this world. Obviously, you have uh, Islam, you have um, Buddhism, you have Hinduism, uh, polytheism. Um, uh, are these religions taking after so much, you know, uh, which is the worshipping of, of so many other gods, right? Um, there are also several different branches of Christianity, right? However, we know that the true Bible doctrine and what is written in there, it is the living, inspired word of God, and it doesn't lie. And so that doctrine, when you are applying that to your life and you are applying the precepts or the instructions into your life and you are applying... Um, all of the knowledge that you've received, when you when you receive the baptiz- baptism and that spirit of, um, of of Christ is in you, you will exercise the fruits of of, of the true doctrine, and also um, um, those fruits of love and charity um, that come with it, which is just which is just pure peace. You know, we know that Christ is a Prince of Peace, and when we have Him inside of us, by default, we end up following the commandments. Um, that is ordained for us to to follow, right? And I'm not going to go too much uh, into that uh, today, right? So I guess the important message that I'm trying to bring across to you is that our our faith in Christ, our our um, I'm not going to use the word religion, but what we practice is the truth. And the reason why it is the truth is because we are living testimonies of our revelations we are living testimonies of his manifestations and his manifesting light working through us not the false light which is Satan, which is sin right we we are that we are living we are expressions of god right and we have according to his obedience his divine revelation working through us because when we are obedient and submit himself submit ourselves to him according to his perfect doctrines of love of joy of peace of following his obedience of, of, of being rather obedient to him as he was uh, obedient to the Father. We ourselves, he allows us to have these great signs and wonders work in our life in order for us to edify the church and the other bodies of believers, speaking of your other brothers and sisters around you, and also your, the other lost sheep, right? Now, I'm going to back this up with some scripture, but um, there are many different revelations that we, we experience, right? Now, a perfect example of um, how God is a living word of God is just these testimonies that we watch on YouTube, online, these other conversations we have with brothers and sisters about how they have these miraculous stories about how God has pulled them out of the world. And 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 it's simply so powerful, their testimonies, that we have no other explanation. There couldn't be – it couldn't be a coincidence because neither man nor beast nor any other – uh, uh, element of this world can could manifest such a such a happening. Speaking of these uh, testimonies of divine intervention, speaking of how God saved people from the depths of of, of hell, of drug addiction, of um, of alcoholism, of depression, of anxiety and sadness. Me myself, I make true testimony of that in itself. Right when people were at the absolute lowest point, and they and they in that moment turned to Christ. All of a sudden, their lives just completely change. How does that happen? All of a sudden, right? And and look, there are many different um, there are many different uh, religions in this world at which people will profess to to have experienced. They might have professed to have experienced uh, something on the lines of that. But we know that the one true um, living God doesn't lie. His doctrine is true, and we know that His signs and His wonders working through us doesn't lie, right? And we are. We, 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 we become true examples of, of modern-day prophets and apostles. Hence, this channel is called The Apostolic Calling, which is what I'm going to go into right now. I've written down a few notes here because I thought it was the most productive way of going about today's, um, today's video. Um, I, I, I wanted to, um, to really make some concrete points here according to the spirit and the way it's been moving among my own body of believers that I'm currently resigning with. You know, the apostolic calling. Why is it called the apostolic calling? Well, again, you know, we have tangible evidence with the Bible, but also we are living testimonies of God, right? And 
uh, last year when I was uh, in in uh, in Cairns uh, in North Queensland, I actually conducted a five day fast, and in this time, God actually told me, uh, you know, through working many different signs, He actually told me literally revelation after revelation through people, through um, uh, dreams that I'd had in the night. And also by, oh, by literally using the word of God through the Spirit, I was able to. He was able to give me an instruction that was so sound and clear that uh, I was almost like I had the traits of uh, an apostle. Uh, an apostle, right? I love to travel, right? I love to uh, to to speak words uh, of wisdom. All of my life, I've loved to do to do this, right? Even from a very young age, I spoke um, at a at a at a level at, at a level of seriousness and intellectual capacity that was um, um, that was uh, notably more wiser than perhaps other kids of my age. And I'm not boasting or being prideful about myself. This is uh, simply an observation that um, many of my other family members noted at the time. Um, also, um, I. I, you know, love to travel. I love to speak to other people and profess wisdom, words of wisdom. Uh, I love the ways of the world, right, but not uh, the false ways of this world. You know, I was fascinated with the creation and the elements of certain factors of life that other brothers and sisters um, didn't necessarily know about, right? But uh, the, the ability to also broadcast real-time information, as a lot of you have seen with the Shark Watch story, or the Shark Watch project, which is still currently uh, testifying of its godly brilliance uh, to this day in, in terms of my innovative mind. The, through God's revelation instruction, he actually told me that all of these things that he gave me was uh, to be uh, as um, to act in this world as an apostle, to travel around, right, to preach the word, to um, and uh, to uh, yeah, preach preach words of wisdom that isn't. Um, or the or the or the good news that um, you know we are we are truly sons and daughters of the Most High, and the time to uh, turn away from our evil ways is, is at hand, right? And another thing I noticed about myself is that I always found myself being dragged into certain trends in the world in terms of sinful nature, right? I know that when I was a, uh, I was a very innocent kid before I went to school. Before I um, before I started going to nightclubs, uh, started clubbing, and uh, you know engaging in all sorts of uh, profanity in the world, for me I was always dragged to do these sorts of things and influenced by other people around me. It was necessary. It wasn't necessarily a true uh, desire that I had to go and pursue these things. And eventually, uh, as 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 life went on, and I saw the way that the world operated, I started questioning things more and more. And then that's how God uh, came to me uh, when the whole pandemic kicked off in 2020. This video is, is fair use, right? So this video, um, this YouTube channel rather, is called The Apostolic Calling because uh, I have received the revelation from the Most High that I have an apostolic succession to go and fulfill, right? I have a particular calling that is an ap that is apostle-like. Now, to many of you people the, in, in this modern day, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, you might uh, think that that sounds blasphemous. Uh, maybe it's better that I use the word missionary uh, because I also like to go out and help people and inspire people and influence them, uh, you know, again, such is what the, the testifying uh, revelation of Shark Watch is, right? So... The purpose of this channel is to inspire, right? So uh, the, the purpose of this channel is to apply Bible doctrine and what is written in Scripture to every day uh, or, or the revelations that I've experienced in my life in order for you to understand that the, uh, the word that, that the God that we follow is indeed living. He's not dead, right? We know that Allah is dead. He's passed away. He's waiting for the judgment, right? He is that false God. So are these other uh, supposed uh, 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 gods in this world, right? We know that the one true creator of heaven and earth, he still does exist in this day because, one, his prophecies are unfolding in the earth. He is the same yesterday, the day before uh, tomorrow. You know, he is the same. He doesn't change. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knew the end from the beginning, right? And so... 
all of his prophecies are literally unfolding. We know that modern day uh, believers are literally speaking in that new tongue that he prophesied in, uh, which uh, when you know we're out preaching the gospel on the streets, we're able to receive the Holy Spirit inside of us that literally um, rejuvenates the entire body and allows us to speak words of wisdom uh, without stopping, almost like a poetic rhythmical um, type of uh, type of um, vocabulary uh, that that you're you're seeing right now. Because I wouldn't have been able to speak for 30, 40, 50 minutes at a time in front of a camera prior to receiving this calling of mine. Right. So we're going. I'm going to go to the Book of Psalms. Bear with me, right? I know that a lot of you are new to this channel and you're not necessarily into the whole Bible doctrine, but let's just let let me just just bear with me while I read this verse as I go to the book of Psalms and I go to the 37th chapter and the 23rd and 24th verse. It reads, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand, right? Now, this is the amazing thing about working and sacrificing your life for the one true living God. When you receive his calling or when you decide you want to go and work for him and make these sacrifices, he will be there for you, right? And he will show you all of these uh, divine, these amazing signs and revelations and wonders through his living creation that literally testifies of his perfect love. Folks, I've been uh, in, in, in heavy prayer and fasting, and I've had literally at, this, at the click of a finger my prayers answered on the same day in the same moments um, that that prayer has been um, that that prayer has been given to the heavens. I've literally had an answer with someone come in my place. And he has told me a specific thing. Remember, angels, which that in that Greek word means angelos, means a messenger. So you will literally have angels of God come down, down to you or come to you in the forms of other brothers and sisters, other uh, everyday uh, citizens you will see in this earth, as they're so-called. And they will literally speak God's uh, the words of God through themselves um, according to um, the, you know, according to, God's manifestations uh, through creation, and look, and 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 you know, He sends also many different signs to us through uh, through through prophecy as well, with the weather, with the earthquakes, right? Undeniable truth. Um, but for you personally, we need to remember that we ourselves are to have a personal relationship with our Most High God. You see, He doesn't desire you to go to church one day a week in order for you to be set apart from him the other six days a week. If that's the case, on the day that your soul is cold, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you, ye who work iniquity, right? Though you profess to know me, you, you didn't truly uh, know me according to your works and the fruits of your doings, right? So, so we need to um, really cherish and, and constant, you know, we need to really pray without ceasing, and we need to be obedient to his commands, what he wants us to do in this earth according to his glorious word, right? We also need to have that personal relationship to understand, you know, ask him, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What have you showed me in my life? How have you been there for me? And what is it that you want me to do next? And, and how can I, pardon me, how can I utilize these uh, these strengths to be assets um, for the kingdom of heaven to come, right? Which is... Uh, which is actually coming on this earth, and another undeniable prophecy that will take place according to the book of Revelation and what is written in the uh, the Old Testament prophets. So I've literally been in other cities and I've had God send me on assignments. He's given me people to go and minister to. You know, I've been out and I've, um, you know, I've packed my bags. I've gone out and solo travelled. And, um, you know, the, the, the great thing about me and myself, one of the great um, uh, traits that I have or strengths is my ability to connect with people one-on-one -on -one and be a mentor with them. So when I go out on trips around uh, the country by myself generally, um, what happens is I've noticed that God gives me certain people to go and preach to. Now, how do I know he gives me these certain people? Well, 
I will not, not only see them once, but I may see them twice in a city where the population is hundreds of thousands to millions of people. Now, what is the chances of that? You tell me, right? Where I've seen this brother twice and there's just something about him in which I can't help myself but to uh, uh, to ask certain questions of him in regards to, um, you know, that spirit coming through me and what I desire to speak about these days in terms of prophecy. And all of a sudden it will click with them, right, where they will – uh, not not only receive me, these particular individuals that I've actually received assignments for from the Most High God, but they will actually then want to know more and they will stay with you. And then you see them again that another day, you know, where you might have not even planned to have met up with a brother and all of a sudden they're right in your path. That is God literally, um, literally moving the spiritual chessboard in order for these people to be in front of you for, for you to, um, to profess the word, to preach the word to them, right? And that is the accountability you realize in these moments, and that helps you establish faith and realize, okay, this is a part of my calling. This is um, what God wants me to do. And if I'm continually obedient to him, he will provide blessings for me, right? He will provide protection for me. He will help my family in the times to come to be his will. He will um, provide me with food and water. Uh, he will uh, stop any sort of... Um, incidents from taking place that may endanger my life. Uh, he will form a hedge of protection around me as is prophesied in the book of Psalms, right? So, that, you know, it's uh, testimony after testimony, folks, you know. It, you know, in Cairns, when I was on that five-day fast and I was pr heavily in prayer and wanting to know my purpose, God literally told me my purpose, right, using a person and using... Um, the, the word of God, literally Proverbs, the 12th chapter. I was praying for instruction and he literally gave me Proverbs, the 12th chapter on a night when I knew I knew very little about the book of Proverbs. I wasn't up to it in terms of my reading and the overall uh, reading of the Bible. And, um, and it so literally happens that he answered my question with that exact chapter and verse. All I remember was waking up in the morning after dreaming that night which I heard uh, my head or my spirit communing to something, uh, in some sort of conversation mentioning the book of Psalms. And I was debating back and forth with this sort of spiritual uh, entity, if you like. I couldn't see him. Uh, it was black. I was almost in a REM state of sleep, but my spirit was interceding to a higher power, right? And I believe that um, it was potentially an angel of the Most High or potentially the Most High himself trying to direct me to the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter, because when I woke up that morning, the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter, um, came to me. Now, at this stage of my walk, I was four months into baptism, and I was trying to find out what my purpose was on this earth. And this is how he came up. He gave me the apostolic calling, right? So we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, and we're going to read the particular revelation the Most High gave to me. Now, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but I'll read the first verse because this is what I'll, exactly what I was praying for, which God answered me. He said, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that, that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favour of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. And then it goes on to speak about a virtuous woman, right? Yeah, I'm going to read from the uh, 22nd verse, uh, and I might read all the way down. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that do truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbour, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Right? So very clear instructions. Everything that I prayed for and everything that I needed edification for, God knew. He provided that to me 
according to my mind, he placed that thought in my mind, go to Proverbs the 12th chapter. You've forgotten about what you dreamed about. Go to Proverbs the 12th chapter. And literally on the first night of that fast, I received my first revelation from the Most High telling me that, um, that yeah, I have my instructions right here. Follow this. Follow my living word and follow my commands. Don't be uh, slothful. Uh, go out and do as you're commanded by myself, right? Now, on the second or the third day of the fast, I was in Cairns and again by myself, and I remember praying again, what is my purpose? Um, you know, uh, how, how do you want me to uh, do your will on this earth, Father, you know? And uh, it was something on the lines of that. It was a constant prayer. I was constantly praying. I was praying something on the lines of four or five times a day, Right. Not that I'm insinuating you have to do the same, but it's good to always be thinking on godly things and thinking about his will. Right. Because this is how we also receive these revelations. Now, on the th on the third or fourth day, uh, I, re I received uh, or there was a brother who came in, or an elder gentleman who came and sat next to me. I was going on a rainforest uh, train trip through the rainforest. And I was going to then take the Sky Rail, which is a very uh, popular tourist um, uh, thing to do in Cairns. And so this brother came and sat next to me. Mind you, I'm really wanting to, uh, you know, find out what my purpose is. I've been heavy in prayer. All I've done is constantly been meditating on things of God. I haven't been looking at things of the world. I haven't been watching TV. I haven't been uh, worrying about um certain worldly things that are going on. I'm just completely disconnected from the world. And all I want to do is God's will. And I want to feel him inside me. I want to feel uh, his presence. And I want the Holy Spirit to help direct and lead me. Well, on that day, that exact thing happened. Because uh, hours later after this, a, a, a gentleman came and sat next to me. And uh, this train carriage at which we we're going to go in the, in the rainforest was many, many different carriages long. And so, um, long story short, he sat next to me, and it turns out he had the same carriage and the same seat right next to me. And as we started talking, not only did, is that somewhat coincidental, considering there are hundreds of seats on that train, and he's got the one sitting next to me, and he's so randomly just come to sit next to me. As, as the duration of that trip unfolded that day, we then started talking about his... Um, his profession, he was a sports psych, uh, psychologist. He uh, he was in a high uh, uh, position of uh, jiu-jitsu fighting. Uh, he had trained with the England uh, Olympic team. And shout out to the brother whose name is... Um oh, I actually forgot, but... <laughs> But uh, we actually started talking, and he wanted to know about the substance of faith, right? He was really curious to know about God. He'd been traveling from England or his place in Jersey over in the or over where he is in Europe, and he'd come to travel around Australia and to be with his sick, uh, as his sick son who was suffering a particular illness. Now, in this time. Uh, I, I got to know so much about this man. He had so many godly qualities. And what he revealed to me was that his father was a Freemason, right? And not only that, it, it, it really dawned on my spirit that this man was asking questions about God, right? He was curious to know more about God and more about ways in which he could be godly in his life. And I realized that this Holy Spirit had drawn me to him according to my prayers, in order to show me that I myself had the enough wisdom and knowledge at that time of the gospel of Christ in order for me to preach to him the word of God, to save his soul, to be a one-on-one -on -one mentor, and to be a true traveling apostle or missionary of this earth, right? Hallelujah. That is the, the, the glorious, um, that is the glorious uh, confession of Christ literally coming through and, and, and explaining to me my purpose on this earth. And so after that, I spent... Uh, two, at least two days with him, and um, we, we became great friends over the duration of the trip. I literally nonstop preached the gospel to him. For a man that really didn't have uh, much of a grasp on on how to serve God, he really did uh, listen to everything I had to say in terms of uh, what had gone on uh, in regards to the true doctrine um, and um, the, uh, the prophetic uh, events that are unfolding in the earth this day. So another uh, important testimony um, that I experienced or revelation that I would like to share on this channel is actually um, 
in regards to a trip that I embarked on, a particular assignment, uh, as I as I now um, have come to the knowledge of how of what I've come to understand, this was a an assignment that was handed to me from God. Right? He um, again, without a shadow of a doubt, this was an assignment. I uh, I was over and I decided to go to Tasmania. Um, during this particular time, I was on a 21-day uh, vegetarian fast, right? We've heard of the Daniel fast. Um, a lot of us uh, believers have heard of the Daniel fast. So it's not a complete um, abstinence from food, but it's actually a um, it's actually a, uh, a particular diet that um, brings us to abstain from uh, certain pleasurable foods like sugar, sweeteners, um, and to go on a whole grain, whole vegetable, uh, fruit, diet right nuts seeds everything raw and part of the earth and in this time i went on the the daniel fast to or the vegetarian fast um as it later turned out to be i didn't invest enough um time in, in terms of reaching the uh, in terms of researching about uh, the way i was probably meant to do the fast but it had a profound effect nonetheless all of the spiritual burdens that I was experiencing at the time in terms of sinful thoughts, lustful thoughts coming to the mind that were really holding me down in terms of being faithful. Um, you know, the spiritual warfare I was experiencing at the time was just simply profound. And so, um, you know, that's how the enemy comes to us as well, by the way. He comes to us with our thoughts, right? He has direct access to us according to our flesh and our mind and the thoughts that come out of our mind, right? That's why we need to hold every single thought that comes out of my mind under the captivity of Christ's obedience, written in Scripture also, right? So so anyway, in this time of this fast, uh, I, I, I received the revelation, you know, according to Tasmania's great um, godly creation that it is with many different wonderful natural elements of uh, Christ's perfect love, speaking of the rainforests, the waterfalls, uh, the natural running rivers, the bays and the estuaries, the mountains with the houses there, um, the the um, the gardens. Uh, in the midst of all of this, uh, there is a very satanic museum that is in the centre of the city, or is just outside of the city, situated just outside of the city, right? almost like it's sitting on some sort of aisle of, of, of imprisonment. That's what I would call it. And this museum, speaking of uh, its, 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 uh, its relativeness to Hobart, it is, it is based in the city of Hobart, right? And um, it is your most popular museum. And I'm going to come on here now and expose this revelation and also share with you not only this revelation, but expose this museum and how evil it is and how evil does run the world. And that how if you are an atheist yourself, you are going to have to testify according to this revelation that godlessness does want run the world. And you will have no choice but to admit that Satan or Lucifer is the god of this world because these are the places that are trending in this world. You see, this very museum professes to be a modern uh, art ex a place of modern art uh, exhibitions. And yet this place is full of profanity. It is perverse. It is disgusting. And me myself felt, as a man with the Holy Spirit inside of me, felt under attack. But this story is so deep, folks. And um, and look, on this particular assignment, I met a, a gentleman from, from Singapore. Now, this particular brother, he was... Uh, he was about 36 years of age. He looked very healthy. He looked probably about my age, which speaks a lot about myself, actually. But um, <laughs> he looked about my age, and he was, um, you know, he he was just traveling around by himself. He didn't have a woman. He, 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 he was struggling with alcohol, right? And he opened up to me. He really did open up to me over the course of this journey, that we, the time that we spent together. I sat with him on the bus on the first day of the tour, one of these tours that I went on, just to explore Tasmania and try to, try to connect with the Most High outside of the confinements of Satan, Satan's uh, nine-to-five uh, imprisonment world that we live in. And so this gentleman sat next to me. And we spoke and we spoke and lo and behold, you know, I start speaking about scripture because that's all I really care about this day, uh, to be honest with you. And, um, and, and you know, 
and 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 lo and behold, he he starts you know opening up about himself and his own walk and and, and his own and his own faith. And you know, I started really pressing him with certain questions, but this particular gentleman was he was a bit uh, he looked a bit how do you say uh, not willing to um, or not appealed or didn't appeal to the, the the manner of conversation which I was leaning towards. You know, in terms of you know. And this is the unique, uh, the unique um, trait that I have uh, coming from knowledge of sales. I know how to uh, relate to people. I know how to turn the dime, so to speak. I know how to change the course of the conversation and direct it into the manner that I want to direct it in, right? Now, of course, some of you might, might say this is manipulation. Well, not really, folks, because it's out of um, it's it's out of a righteous and loving heart that that, that I go and manipulate the conversation uh, or direct the conversation rather to a place of, of of true conversation of holy conversation and of a conversation that's going to potentially save someone's soul right so uh, i'm just selling the truth so to speak right and so this gentleman was he was sitting beside me and you know every time i would drop little nuggets drop little seeds right about the truth in terms of what was unfolding in the world, about how, you know, we're, we're, we're not uh, a part of this holiday crowd here. We're not a part of the matrix system, but we ourselves have realized that there is something in our life that has drawn us to this place, and there is something going on in our life at which God is reaching out to us. And so I was that messenger to this, to this brother. Now, what became very clear to me, right, was that while he may have been also solo traveling as I was, no coincidence again that it was put on my bus to be next to me on this tour, right? But the fact that this was no doubt an assignment was the fact that a, a day later, after parting ways, I see the brother again. I see the brother again in a city where there's hundreds of thousands of people of population. He's right there in front of me. Right? Again, that that a chessboard of the of, of, of the spiritual realm working, God using placing the, the pieces of the chess chessboard uh, to work in, uh, in in his favor to get the right message preached to this brother right who was in need of it and and so again we're on the so so this time we both decide and and this is by our own individual choice we didn't plan to do this right we just randomly met up with one another we decide to go to this particular museum and um, and so we're on the boat talking, and and the and the conversation turns to God, you know, the Most High, uh, you know, do we have a relationship with Him? Uh, do you believe in 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 this in in this entity, so to speak, the, the Creator of heaven and earth, you know? And and you know there were some there were little bits and pieces, and then all of a sudden, right, according to perhaps His unbelief. God drops a bombshell on both of us as we walk into this museum full of Satanism. It was so bad, I'm not even going to show you some of the content of which I was exposed to in my time here, uh, in my time there, rather. Now, I'm not going to mention the name of this museum, but you will find it. You will find this museum because it's one of the most popular museums in Hobart. And as a matter of fact, they even would like to call it family-friendly. But you know what? Lucifer wants you to think that too, right? He wants your kids to be involved in darkness from a young age. Isn't that what's happened to all of us? And so his perverted wicked his perverted wicked ways, his perver his 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 disgusting nature is just absolutely expressed throughout this world and, and in this particular on this particular occasion in his museum. In in this particular museum, right? Now all I can say is this content is so bad. There are there are banners on the walls that say F, uh, speaking of the swear word, F God. A straight up blasphemy. There are also satanic pentagrams. Banners of satanic pentagrams in banners, right? I may put up uh, some of these pho video, photos and videos here, but I, pr I, I encourage you all to pray over this video do not let what you see in this video right now, what you are seeing in this video, do not let it uh, uh, take a hold of your life. Do not do not meditate on these things. Rebuke it in the name of Christ. Because what you are seeing is absolute wickedness. It, it is pure perversion. And I walked into this place, and as a born-again believer, 
in the spirit. My spirit was being under attack. They play dark, demonic, low vibrational energy in terms of music. The audio is low vibrational energy that radiates through tunnels or, if you like, portals that lead to other sections of absolute uh, perversion or other sections that, that come across as dark, satanic dungeons, rooms. The, 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 the pornography on display, there is pornography on display. There is literally rectums on the wall, right? There is literally people. I'm not even going to speak of these disgusting things that I came across in, the, in this museum, but I felt extremely uncomfortable. And you know what? I know God was using that time and place for this brother to open up his eyes. And you know what? I was commentating the whole thing the whole time. Praise God. Praise the most high. Right? And so after that experience, this brother was literally shaken to the core. Look, me as a believer, I was shaken to the core because I truly didn't realize how 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 wicked, how wickedness is 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 professed throughout the world, how how openly um, expressed and flaunted it is throughout society. You're telling me a family-friendly museum in Hobart is bringing up this sort of uh, occultism and witchcraft. I rebuke it in the name of Yeshua Christ. Right? And so we were both shaken after that uh, experience, you know. And, uh, and, and, and I said to him, look, I said to this brother, there is a reason why these satanic powers <coughs> have a hold of us in this world because they know where your soul is going. Uh, the conversation was something on the lines of that, but perhaps not to that it, uh, accuracy. Now, this brother was talking about his, uh, his old man who'd actually passed away on the, and on, on the operating table and had seen his body. Now, I'd given him the truth that the soul lives on forever. And this is where these wicked people want you to go, right? These lost souls are literally worshipping Lucifer and using, and Lucifer is using them to, um, to showcase his, uh, his, his wickedness and his evil throughout the world. And so these are some of the awesome assignments that you were sent on, all right? These are work trips that you were you will find yourself. These are the true work uh, work trips that you are to embark on. All right. We are under the almighty power of the Most High, folks. We are under His. We are under His covenant, right? So, nothing. It's not always going to be by the script. It's not always going to be by the structure. You see, the structure of this world. Is foolishness to God, right? There is oh my, only so much merit we can gain by following the systems in place in this world. Speaking of the nine to fives and serving God, it becomes it becomes hard. It really does become hard. And I've emphasized this a lot on this channel. Are we doing enough? Yeah, sure, right? But we all have to ask this question because these are the awesome experiences God takes us on. According to our faithfulness to him, if we pray to him, if we fast, and if we sacrifice all of our worldly strongholds, he will multiply blessing after blessing, and he will also show you the way to eternal life beyond the confinements of this physical, tangible, edible world, conceivable, uh, yeah, world, the substance. Substance of the substances of this world, right? Which perish. They all perish. Okay? So, incredible, incredible revelation. Now, in this museum, uh, you know, you take a boat ride to this particular museum. You, uh, you, they get you to write down your, uh, your, your details in terms of where you live. I highly recommend, um, you avoid this particular place. This place is a place of Satanism. It is most likely run by uh, individuals in the occult. As a matter of fact, uh, the the director of this museum uh, has a particular uh, friend that is uh, probably one of the highest well-known witches in the world. 
And so me, because of my ignorance, unaware to the place that I was going in, I really had to pray after that and seriously felt convicted in my spirit, right? And it was a test. It was a testimony to me that I need to harden up and realize that all of this, uh, all of this uh, foolishness in terms of dark worship, really doesn't profit me to be fearful of. Because I know that this God, that while He may destroy my body one day, it is not worth. It is. It is simply not. The, the, the fear is not worth. It. it, it neglecting eternal life because if there is a reason why they are there there is a reason why they are showcasing this wickedness in the world to the level that it is flaunted and it is there is a reason why society doesn't speak up and it's because many people are lost and don't realize the 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 depth of the delusion that they are living in the lie that they are living and if we can just become accustomed to to wickedness, to pornography, to to violence, to murder, to sod to to sodomy, which was also being showcased in this place. Then perhaps our kids will also be accustomed to it. And when 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 does you know when does it stop? Right. This is why we have this uh, incredible calling on our shoulders. Again, you know, every single day there are revelations manifesting. Um, I've seen visions come to pass uh, in my sleep. I've seen a vision uh, come to pass in my sleep. Um, I've also uh, released uh, spirits that I thought I would never release from myself before, spirits of bitterness and unforgiveness that I've been holding on to for years, um, spirits of, and, 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 and you know, just on, over the matter of uh, uh, over the course of a matter of hours on a three-day fast, which I was actually weeping, sorry, sorrowful, gen genuinely saddened. He, he again just completely like he placed the spirit upon me just to cleanse out of my soul whatever evil uh, spirit was actually ta hijacking my soul and that spirit of b bitterness. Um, the places you visit and the more, you, you know, the places you visit, if they are more natural, I've found that in places of the wilderness, it's like the wilderness is literally worshipping the Most High. When you are in the Spirit, when you are that in the Spirit with God, when you have nothing else in this world that is holding you under spiritual bondage and all of a sudden you are at complete peace with the Most High and you're in places of the wilderness where there are waterfalls, where there are birds chirping, you realise it's almost like God is talking to you through His creation. You don't experience things like this in the city, right? In your brick and mortar uh, tower of like Babylonian uh, cities that we live in this day. Not saying it's impossible, but the frequencies that run in the air are strategically, uh, strategically um, uh, low vibrational frequencies to try and uh, place you in in spirits uh, that are that are not that are not Christ-like, right? And so this is why we need to constantly be covered with the flammer of God. Um, you know, again, this particular museum, you know, I use this video right now to expose this place. It is purely satanic. And I've realized that, you know, this particular city itself, it does have a bit of a dark vibe about it. It's a beautiful place of God, God's creation and manifestation. But unfortunately, Lucifer has dipped his fingers in uh, in God's in God's peace and tranquility, and turned it into an absolute. Uh, uh, it will, will certain places into absolute sa places of satanic worship, right? And this this can be found all over the world. I know that, but just remember, folks, God, uh, you know, uses places. He uses people. He he helps you. Do what you need to do in terms of your the Father's will. If you submit to him and you want to do his will, he will show you many great things and he will send you to many great places, right? You can't deny the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You can't deny God's works. The biggest uh, lie that uh, you can be fed is the fact that this earth was created by a big bang or... By um, there was no creator, 
and the, the, the most powerful knowledge you can receive, I've found personally. For me personally, this is the most powerful knowledge I've received. Number one, man was made to live eternally. So when we pass away, when this fleshly body passes away, our soul and our spirit lives on forever at an appointed place according to the life that we lived and the good and the bad that we've done. Now, many religious religions twist this ideology in the world, so be careful of that, right? There is no such thing as reincarnation. Everything you need to know is in the living word of God, speaking of the Holy Bible behind me, right? Um, yeah. It's that deep. The second thing is that, you know, this world is made in, you know, has a creator. And we were made in perfect love. And our creator loves us. However, uh, Satan, who is the god of this world, is also the deceiver. And he is transformed into an angel of light to, cons to, to deceive you and to make you think that the material riches of this world, the substance of this world, which will perish, is the seal and the end all for many people. But we need to stay true to our word, or, or we need to stay true to the word. We need to grow faith in the fact that there is a one true, one true God. Right? Have patience in Him, and and and, and He will show you all things of truth. Just trying to briefly get, if you just bear with me, hopefully some other, I'll be able to uh, place some photos of this dark place. Um, there are literally banners that say, God is your enemy. Uh, there is absolute blasphemy. The, the words are vanity. They are, they are just horrible uh, statements on these banners that are written on these banners. There is an upside down cross, which is literally mocking God. There are photos of pornography, wicked acts of pornography, bestiality is promoted in this place. There is demonic figures painted, artwork. There is a decapitated head of a body, uh, speaking of uh, some sort of art, a piece of art sculpture there. There is a photo of a naked, what is what looks to be a woman, with the crucifix uh, going into her uh, private, her anatomy, so to speak. Let's just leave it at that. Pure evil in a place of godly magnificence. What more do you expect? The greater God's revelations, the greater the counterattack from the God of this world, speaking of Lucifer. Right. And so on that note, that is why I have sacrificed pretty much most things in my life, just about everything really, to, to follow the one true creator of heaven and earth. I used to love sports. I used to follow the football passionately. Most people would know me for my fanatical um, Port Adelaide following. Uh, I used to travel and uh, I used to follow my current, my football team around the country. I used to attend all of the home games. Uh, I used to go to the away games. I used to watch every game on TV. If I couldn't watch it on TV, I would record it. I used to be uh, screaming at the top of my lungs, cheering at football games. Um, had to let that go. Uh, yeah. Look, I mean, it becomes idolatry. When you have the perfect understanding, when you have the perfect knowledge, wisdom of God manifesting through you, you will eventually be drawn away from these things, right? Uh, I used to uh, watch pornography. I used to watch it a lot. I used to uh, commit fornication multiple times a day, right? I, uh, I was sexually immoral. Um, yeah, I was trying everything to, to try and quit masturbation. And then 
uh, the fear of God was instilled in me <clears throat> one night when he showed me a horrible place, uh, when he showed me a horrible, a horrible experience, of which I felt my spirit literally lift out of my body uh, as a as a as um as punishment for for a rhetorical question I had asked him was sent to a place of uh, darkness. Uh, in that time, felt real. I don't think it was a dream. Literally felt everything. Um, yeah, that was enough to, for me to uh, have stopped uh, masturbating. I haven't done it now for for about probably about four hundred days. Um, I don't have the desire to ever do it again. It's just, you know, it's it's sinful in nature, and and the Holy Spirit will stop you from doing that. So I encourage you to get baptized. Um, I used to uh, have a really perverse mouth. I used to swear nonstop. Uh, miraculously, when I got the Holy Spirit, when I received that baptism, and as I started to come to the knowledge of God, my swearing just naturally stopped. Um, I used to. What didn't I used to do in terms of sin? Well, I didn't do drugs. I was a you know I would I would drink to intoxication. I would be drunk. I was prideful and egotistic, very prideful and egotistic. Um, I, I used to compete against my brothers and sisters all the time, trying to uh, outcompete them in everything. Um, I was, uh, yeah, um, uh, you know, a gym junkie, uh, absolutely worshipping my muscles more than my spirit. Uh, I was a glutton. You know, I used to eat really excessive amounts of food simply to fuel that gym addiction. I used to eat six to eight times a day. And I used to be disobedient, dishonorable to parents, mother and father. I used to, uh, speaking of earthly parents, <coughs> they say it not to call anyone your father, but your father who is in heaven. Um, and there is a reason for that. Um, uh, you know, he's the one that leads us to eternal life. Um and, yeah, I used to dishonor them all the time, the spirits of bitterness. I used to be intemperate and angry. Uh, I used to have rage, outbursts, you know, over nothing. Um, oh yeah, I, I did not expect this much of a turnaround in such a short amount of time. But that's what the fear of God does. That's what the knowledge of true wisdom does to you when you realize that your whole life not only has been a lie as you – uh, as you commonly hear these days, but when you discover that there is a sick, dark, evil, satanic agenda going against you and your family and your brothers and sisters, when you come to that realisation that every single thing that you've conceived in consumer culture in terms of, in, you know, with the education system you've been brought up with, with the healthcare system, with the... Um, with the entertainment industry, the media industry, when you realise that all of this is strategically placing you in a position of indoctrination in order, you, in order for you to stop knowing the truth, then you will realize that there is a creator of heaven and earth. And the, these agendas can't be for no reason. It doesn't stop at death, right? It doesn't stop there. Why do you think there is substances that are in the abominations that have been released in the earth? They literally have the ingredients, luciferase in them, fair use. Why are there people in the entertainment industry literally pushing out media clips of, uh, of hell or, or, or of, 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 of the devil? Why, why does it matter? Do you, do you think it's just for fantasy, fairy tale? But when you come out and you come to the other side, when you realize that when you when you do come to that realization and you turn to God and you just humble yourself and just for a moment you go and get on your knees and you start crying and you realize, you know, when you're sitting up in bed at night that maybe you you have no one else to turn to but him. And even if he doesn't exist, 
you pray to him. When he comes to you and he receives you, that peace that you feel is greater than anything that you've ever experienced, any any sweetness, any any false sense of security you felt, any friend. He's greater than any fair friend, any parent. And when he starts helping you in your life and lifting you up and showing you many great things to try and tell you that he has always been with you and this is your time to shine. You are the chosen one as a matrix, so to speak. You are literally Neo, right? When he tells you that, it doesn't matter about your job anymore. It doesn't matter about your friends, your worldly friends. It doesn't matter about your partner even. It doesn't matter about you know, if she if she's if she's you know causing you or or he if he's if he's causing you much grief you know out of ungodliness. You know, it doesn't even matter about all of the the lies you've told, all of the all of the the wickedness you've lived. It can be forgiven. And that forgiveness is like being wrapped up in his arms, in the arms of someone truly defiant, almighty. And his spirit, walking in his spirit every single day, is literally the same. Same experience. And so... I encourage you to call out to me. Send me an email. I'll put the link below here or in the video even. Get baptized. Let me be your mentor one-on-one -on -one. and let me help you find your calling according to God, according to the one true God, creator of heaven and earth. His name that he gave to Moses, I am that I am, the great I am. In the name of his only begotten Son, the Saviour, Yeshua, Christ. Hallelujah and Amen. Praise God.